I'm Vince Shorka, your man on the music scene for Tampa Bay Music News, and we're here to visit with the one and only Ronnie D of Ronnie D and the Superstars. Let's see what he's up to. Hey, Vin. Hey, hey, Ron. Good to see you, buddy. All right. Come on in. I got something on the stove. This way. Mm, smells good. Yeah, smell this. Mm. I got to finish it with black pepper. Could you hand mm, me the pepper? Yeah. Where'd you learn to cook, Ronnie? My grandmother. When I moved down, I starved for a few weeks and then started asking my grandmother for food, and she said, only if you pick me up and bring me to your house, I'll teach you. It was a way for her to get out. <laughs> now, where'd you get your uh, love for music? How'd you get in this business? I think it's in my DNA. I grew up in a musical family, five generations. Uh, my dad was a rock star in the 60s. And my mom was a great singer. When I'm on the road, playing in a town without a name, and I'm feeling low. Brothers and sisters all played and sang. Grandparents. I, I I was doomed from the get-go. I had no choice. Had all the instruments in the house to play with as toys. Wow, thank you. Yeah, I watched my dad play saxophone, and when he would come back from a tour, he would let me carry his saxophone inside. We would open the case to let it air out, and it would always kind of sit there in his room, like the Holy Grail, like, don't touch the saxophone, leave the saxophone alone. So I was a bit intrigued by that, and when I got to choose my instrument for school band, it was definitely going to be saxophone, 100%. Can't get away from his smell, Ronnie. It looks great. Looks like it's done. Yeah, it's done. I'm starving. Let's eat. Let's go. Come on. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Ronnie, this looks amazing. Let's have a little wine. Yes, please. I'll serve some food after you pour. Thank you. There's the sound. All right. Like it. All right. Thank you, very Ronnie. Much. So tell me, you know, growing up in a showbiz family, famous dad, traveling all over the place. Describe what it was like as a kid, uh, you know, growing up in that industry. I feel as though I had a blessed childhood fairy tale. And we got to go on tour with my dad in the summers as little children and see the country and meet really cool people. Uh, I'll serve the pasta. Here, eat this. Uh, from Dick Clark, Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry, People like that. Of course, Joe Pesci was always hanging around, a good friend of my dad's. Just a blessed childhood, absolutely. Was your dad tough to work for? Yeah, at times he was uh, a dictator for sure, but looking back on it, he instilled uh, a musical discipline that a lot of people, they have no concept. Uh, the show would start when you leave the house not when the drummer counts off the first song. And we have to arrive to the venue on time. It's late, you have to be early, you have to play to the minute, you have to look good, you have to sound good, and while you're doing all that, you gotta smile and you gotta dance good. It's all happens at the all same time. together. And if we weren't doing those things, uh, we, would get, we would get docked, we would get fined. So my dad would hold up the five like James Brown in that right. movie. And people say, yeah, your dad loves you so much. I saw him, you know, he waved to you a few times. I said, yeah, $15. Every time he held up the five, that was five that bucks was out of our pay. you guys in line. Yeah, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. And now, how about your mom? What was her role in your uh, career? She was the ringer. Um, my dad is a really good singer. And he, uh, would you like cheese? Sure. He realized that, um, there was a girl that took over his spot when he went on the road the first time that was an amazing singer, which was my mom. So when he returned from one of his tours, he saw her act and incorporated her into his band, uh, Ulterior Motives, of course, because she was totally hot and totally talented. My mom was very influential in our life musically and in my dad's life, obviously, uh, business-wise. She held it down, she managed the bands, she managed my dad, she was in charge of choreography, in charge of how we dressed on stage. Uh, definitely super lucky to have had her wisdom. When did you venture off onto your own and uh, tell me some of the bands you played in? I ventured off into my own when my parents decided to move here from the Bronx, New York, where I grew up. And they basically told me, 
we're going to move to Florida. You can stay in the Bronx by yourself. Good luck. Or you can come. How old were you at that time? 18. And uh, at that point, I said what most 18-year-olds would say, Mommy! <laughs> and I came to Florida. And while we were in New York, we would play Thursday and Friday as D-Force and Saturday with Joey D and the Starlighter. So we worked our way around the country being an original band, which got us very tight. We wrote a lot of music. And when we would come home to the Clearwater, the Tampa Bay area, we would get all the cool gigs. Other friends and bands started to wonder, how are you guys getting all these cool gigs? So it was Ken Logan, who's now in cult status. It was Greg Zink and Tanner who are in the Black Honkies. Brother Phil had a band called Freaks Rule. The other guys were in a band called U Rock. So now they all approached my mom to be their manager too. So my mother started managing bands in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, aside from mine, getting us all really cool gigs. She was an amazing singer. Like a cross between Janis Joplin and Aretha Franklin is what wow. she sounded like. She was the, the first white woman to win Amateur Night at the Apollo in New York. Now you got the superstars. You understand your kids are in the band. You have uh, your dad up there at times. So now you got three generations on stage. How's that yeah. feel? It's amazing. I mean, I remember being in my dad's band when my grandmother would sing with us. So we had my grandmother, my parents, me, and then my sister's son would come on stage as a little kid and break dance. So seeing all the generations, it's wonderful. And when I have that on one of my shows, um, that's special. Yeah, it's so satisfying. That is, that is, uh, it's family. all my willpower to not watch my son on stage. If it's AJ playing guitar, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, remember, okay, the crowd's out there. Don't just watch him the whole time. If my son Jacob playing drums, it's hard for me to not watch them, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're, without a doubt, you are a showman. I gotta ask you, what's with the outfits? Mm -hmm. So, I like to dress up, not just in a suit and tie, but just something that says, hey, what's going on here? It draws attention. Before we even play a note of music, I know when I walk out on stage with a purple zebra striped suit. Some of those suits say, hey, what's going on? Yeah, exactly. It, it makes people stop. It does. Now, back in the day, I had a band called D-Force, and we didn't wear much clothes at all. And we were all young and had abs and brand new tattoos and long hair. You remember those days. We wanted to be like kind of like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, we, at times, you know, we were not afraid to walk out there with no clothes on and socks on our dicks. That was totally fine. Can you beep that out? You know, there's no business without the show. And there's no show without the business. So what's next for the superstars? Ah, we got some cool stuff going on. Um, we have an EP that we just finished up at our new recording studio, Q Recording South. Um, by the time this video comes out, it'll be ready. And there's five songs on there. We have a video from Thank You Music that's getting released. Uh, we're gonna do it in a movie theater. Uh, with a full bar, we're going to do an acoustic set in front of the screen and then get out of the way and show some of our videos leading up to the premiere of our new video. It's going to be beautiful. We got some touring in the summer, do a New York run, we got uh, a Northeast run, and then we got a Nashville run towards the end of the summer. Nice, that sounds fun. I'd like to make a toast to you, your family, and the superstars. Salud. Salud. I'm Vince Chorka, your man on the music scene for Tampa Bay Music News. Signing out till next time. Ciao. Ciao. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Come on. All right. My name is Ronnie D. We are the superstars. And we can play whatever kind of music we want to.